Mga idol at kabayan, breaking news! Hisbullah humihinga pa, naglunsa dito na isang daang rocket sa Israel. Salamat sa Iron Dome, muli nitong pinatunayan na ito ang number one na air defense sa kasalukuyan. Israel kinumpirma naman na isang daang fighter jets nito ang ginamit upang maglunsad ng opensiba sa Hisbullah sa Lebanon. Ganito kadelikado maging kalaban ang puwarsa ng Israel Defense Force. South Korea walang kupas talaga, dalawang barko ng China na iligal na nang isda sa kanilang exclusive economic zone, hinuli at pinagmulta ng milyong-milyong peso. China walang nagawa sa tapang ng South Korean Coast Guard. Crown Prince ng Iran humihingi ng tulong na dapat wakasan na ang pamumuno ng Islamic regime sa kanilang bansa. Sa kabila naman ng pag-atake ng Hezbollah, isang daang mga eroplanong mandirigba naman ang ginamit ng Israel upang maglunsad ang pag-atake sa isang daan dalawang pong Hezbollah target sa Southern Lebanon. Kabilang sa mga tinamaan ay ang Missile at Rocket Depot at Intelligence Headquarters ng Hezbollah sa Southern Lebanon. Ang mga pag-atake na ito ng Israel ay idinisenyo upang palalilin pa ang pinsala sa Hezbollah upang suportahan ang mga tropa ng Israel Defense Force na nagsasagawa ng ground operations sa Lebanon. Hezbollah naglunsad ang isang daang rocket sa hilagang bahagi ng Israel. Makikita sa aktual na video ang mabilis na pagtugo ng mga Iron Dome ng Israel upang salagin ang mga rocket ng Hezbollah. South Korea ang tapang talaga, dalawang barko ng China, hinuli ng mga otoridad ng South Korean Coast Guard. Dahil sangkot ito sa ilegal na pangisda, ang mga Chinese ay nilabag ang South Korean Maritime Rights Exclusive Economic Zone noong ikatatlo ng Oktubre. Pumasok ang mga barko ng China 7.5 miles sa ipinagbabawal na katubigan ng southwest ng Sunchung Island, sabi ng South Korean Coast Guard. Dagdag pa ng South Korean Coast Guard pag mumultahin nito ang mga Chinese ng 300 million won o katumbas ng 223,000 US dollar o 12.6 million peso. Ganito kastrikto ang South Korea pagdating sa kanilang exclusive economic zone kahit China hindi uubra sa kanila. Crown Prince ng Iran nagsalita na tungkol sa maring pamamalakad ng Islamic Republic na pinamumunuan ni Ali Khamenei bilang supreme leader. The Middle East, the cradle of civilization, is rich with stories of great kings, prophets, and philosophers. From Cyrus to Moses to Ibn Khaldun, our nations have given the world some of its greatest visionaries. Leaders like Anwar Sadat, King Hussein, Menachem Begin, King Faisal, and my father too, took up the mantle of seeking peace for our people. But for 45 years, too many of us have been forced to live in fear. Fear of the next terrorist attack. Fear of war. Fear of economic instability. Fear of nuclear blackmail. That's because 45 years ago, my country was taken hostage by a radical regime that seeks not only to keep my people in chains, but to export its revolution to your countries and your people. The regime in Tehran is responsible for the deaths of hundreds of thousands of innocents, Iranians, Arabs, and Israelis, Christians, Muslims, 
and Jews. It facilitated the October 7th attack. It fueled sectarian conflicts in Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, and Yemen. It is trying to unseat the Hashemite kingdom and de delegitimize the custodians of the two holy mosques. It uses Palestinians as human shields. And now it has brought our cradle of civilization to the cusp of regional war. And so today, I come to you with a message. This is not the Iranian people's war. It is Ali Khamenei and his regime's war. The tyrants in Tehran couches his warmongering in Iranian nationalism. But he does not speak for our nation. The crimes his regime has committed against you, our neighbors, are an affront to Iranians and our values. For us Iranians, pride in our nation and love of our country do not come at the price of hatred, antagonism, or chauvinism. My compatriots have shown time and time again that they do not want Iran's wealth spent on fueling wars, fostering instability, or funding terrorism. Iranians are not your enemy. It is the Islamic Republic that is our common enemy, the enemy of all peace-seeking people in our regions, whatever nation they come from or whatever faith they practice. So I say to you, our friends across the Middle East, our region deserves so much better. But in order to succeed, first, this regime that has held us hostage for nearly half a century, must go. The Middle East is all too familiar with turmoil and upheaval. So I know you might fear change will bring chaos, but fear not. We will not allow a power vacuum to follow the collapse of this regime. There is a vast coalition of patriotic Iranians at home and abroad ready to step in to serve our nation and make peace with our region. I have told my compatriots that I will do my duty. I will step forward at their call to oversee this peaceful transition to democracy and Iran's return to the community of nations. Peace is neither a relic of history nor a distant dream. It is a promise we owe to ourselves and our children. And together, we can make it a reality.